Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long, long time before I even updated or posted anything and a lot has happened. <clears throat> now, to spare you all the, the annoyances and the details of anyone's personal life, uh, let's just say um, things hit the fan uh, health-wise for me and a lot of stuff had to change dramatically. Money, you know how it goes, medical expenses, you name it. The whole board. So I ended up having to do two major things that I regret, but then again, I'm grateful for that I had them, and for the people that did buy them from me, it helped me out a lot. And also to those who assisted me, or tried to, or wanted to help me further, but of course I declined, um, <clears throat> money-wise, it makes it clearer. I ended up having to sell Snyder uh, back in 2020, uh, towards the October of late 2020, and you know, didn't really tell anybody. Just kind of posted on my Instagram, kept it just uh, simple, took like a simple sale, whatever, you know, just go go on by. Thought that'd be enough. <clears throat> Turns out it wasn't. So I ended up having to sell Panzer. Uh, now Panzer, in that matter, was the worst uh, feeling ever, seen it go. But I am grateful that I was able to find somebody uh, to purchase that car. <clears throat> His name is Mike. Uh, I'm, I feel really good that I sold it to somebody that could obviously take care of uh definitely definitely afford any type of maintenance or any future mods that he would want to do uh i will post his uh his instagram in my link below so if you wanted to follow panzer in the in, in the future uh aspects of its stages there you can go ahead and do so uh so that's pretty much the the gist of that now kind of wondering what kind of car do you have <clears throat> well we normally do we normally search the web see what's for sale see the prices see what awesome rides are available and i've been searching for an amg from time to time lo and behold i found snyder again and it took me a little while to kind of realize it was the car because there were some other vehicles that are you know colored the same way black on black you know check the vin oh vin matched i checked uh, the modifications that are on it and it was there and sure enough it was the car and i was ec ecstatic you guys you have no idea how well those who have ever sold a car regretted it and you know if had if you had the opportunity to buy it back would you buy it back that's my question to you for me it was uh, it was a yes a definite yes called the dealer show up found out they're in north carolina which is about 1800 miles from my location so that's a good good distance away i was happy i was ecstatic it was just traded in too because they had just pretty put it on their website and spoke to a guy named John on there, and we did a, we did the deal there. We we talked about uh, the vehicle. He's like, "How do you know about the vehicle so much?" And uh, I gave him the story. I built the vehicle from the ground, well, almost the ground up. You know, it was a project that I just started. We built the the entire variable roof system, did a lot of engine uh, uh, improvements or, or or updates. You know, you know, refer re reconditioning the vehicle, the transmission modifications as far as the suspension and the custom East Coast Euro modifications as well. Uh, the, the salesman from the dealership we just got to trade it in you know let's work out a deal let me talk to my sales manager and sure enough uh, he said he'll call me back man it was the worst worst day ever trying to wait for a call every every little notification or ding uh, I went straight to that phone <laughs> up until they finally gave me a call back and sure enough the manager and John were with uh, they were they were game with it man they, they said you know what we want you to have this car back uh, by all means, what's the, what offer can you make us? When they said that, I was just like, Jesus. I was like, yes. I was like, all right. So, you know, we worked details with, the, with you know, <clears throat> all the financial aspects of it, cleared away, and I had to pay for, uh, for obviously, shipping. Pay, took care of that. And just for you that are curious, because I know, you know, hey, numbers, numbers mean everything. The cost for that shipping transport from uh, 1,888 miles, some from... Uh, uh, North Carolina uh, it cost me exactly one thousand one hundred and twenty dollars for the ship and transportation, which is great. I mean, shit, uh, it was the cheapest one that I was able to find with uh, a very experienced driver. So I was really grateful for that. When I received the vehicle, no damages, uh, nothing like that, no, no craziness. He did point out all the little aspects of the car that he noticed prior to loading it. Took some pictures, which was great. Um, and I was, I was, I was happy. Didn't tell anybody. Drove the car did test you know how i am uh find out what that owner did and did not do or and you know there was some things that i need to to work on and you can kind of see them here on the table um i was able to get some parts in 
prior to this video, and one of them is going to be the pump, and that's what this video is about. Other than this whole uh, introductory uh, talk, and I got Snyder back, and now I can continue this project, and uh, hopefully the ones that are still around uh, will enjoy what I can do to this SLK, and I do have plans for it. I'm going to do my best, everyone, uh, and I'm not doing it just for you all, but I'm doing it for myself, and uh, that's 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 everything for, for my well-being, and I'm going to make this car shine really nice, really, really, really nice. Anyway, purpose of this video is Snyder's fuel system. We have here fuel filter for Schneider and fuel pump and the fuel level sending unit. Now, as far as costs go, that's another factor altogether. Then, obviously, other than the fuel system, you see our waste, our waste tech. Hopefully, I'm uh, pronouncing that right. Uh, if I'm not, you guys can definitely correct me um, this is the transmission pan high capacity if you all remember Panzer Panzer had its own custom made um, uh, custom made for that vehicle for the you know 77226 transmission this is for the 7229 trans now unfortunately they don't make one for that car from the other person that I purchased it from but this company does and and it's, it's a pretty beautiful pan very beautiful pan. high capacity eight and ports here on the side if I wanted to add an additional cooler in and out ports for a fill line and drain which is awesome the inline already has its own tube built in let's turn this baby around you can see it right over there that is pretty cool so I don't have to put that plastic one anymore that's just its fill line you can see the eight and ports the baffling here for the sloshing the magnets are already posted in. These are pretty strong magnets. Uh, there's your drain port right over there. Same kind of seal as the one for Panzer, which is awesome, which is right over here. Very good quality seal, very thick. That's what she said. And, um, but yeah, I am looking forward to put this baby in to do a transmission service on that car. I know she's going to appreciate that. And of course, well, Basic maintenance, transmission pan filter, or trend filter, I'm sorry. Um, and of course, you know, I never skip on the basics. Um, cabin air filter, carbon, and, uh, well, the basics filters and some other nonsense here for the SLK I still have, which is great. Didn't have to buy those. And that's it. That's basically what we're going to be working on. And uh, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so first things first is removing all the paneling and pretty much every little item in here just to get to the gas tank but the gas tank is pretty much right behind her behind a metal sheet plate and we need to get back there in order to uh get to the opening where the pumps the uh, level sending unit and the filter so it's just quite a bit of stuff we have to remove um but it's pretty straightforward <laughs> it's just figuring out where to start now, standard tools you're going to need, obviously, some panel poppers. Long screwdriver. This is always beneficial for any job. Some torque bits here. A ratchet. Maybe a power tool. Obviously, I'm using a power tool. Now, as far as the process, I'm going to be taking this back cover off. Removing all the visible bolts and little plastic uh, parts here that keep all this uh, upholstery uh, together Now these always come in handy, but you want to make sure you don't damage the plastic finish. So when you're doing these just make sure you're uh, Being very gentle. They don't require that much force Sometimes they do but enough just to lift it out you don't have to use the screwdriver you can use another nylon panel popper but you know this is uh, I don't have one that's as narrow as this one or as thin so I ended up using this here you could also use a pick also those pick tools work wonders on these as well now one thing to note is when you're removing this back panel in here it has these little clips right behind the carpeting, right here, in the back. Actually, let me move this out of the way. So the way to get to that 
all you got to do is just push the carpet back and I'll release it then you pull from the left side out and once you do that the other side will come off from that end same concept you got to pull the carpeting back the next step is removing this luggage cover which also is the indicator for one of the sensors that we removed as well from from this uh, back cover right here it's held by four points all plastic rivets here so you got to pop obviously one off same thing with this one see how this one's damaged looks like somebody used a screwdriver before let's just get in, get in underneath this second one here and just popping it loose so you don't damage it now there's four of them there's one kind of back there and then the other ones right over here you can see it back here now these you want to take be careful with because you don't want to break these and obviously once you get all four of them out it's simple as taking it off one by one like that in the back same for here and then same for here and once you do that it just comes straight out so you can go ahead and proceed on removing the hosing here the drainage hose link both sides the rubber grommets as well they just pop right off be very delicate don't don't force it just wiggle it out you know this one this hose is still good but I am going to give it a good cleaning inside Now, so far, I don't really have to remove the side carpeting, but I did kind of take it off so I can pull off the this back carpeting cover, but it appears to cover this back plate. Now, the next step now is removing all of this. First things first is this cover plate, which is going to have a fuse housing, which I have to be very careful. This uh, trunk actually makes for a perfectly good seat. Pretty neat. Now, to get this piece off, which is the, the support for that cargo cover, there's one sneaky little bolt right in there. Again, it's going to be an E10. It's right up in there. Same for the other side. Also, there's another one right down there that you need to get. That pretty much will release this left... Uh, support frame same for the right there's two now you want to be careful not to damage any of these plastics don't force them because i'm pretty sure these parts are going to be very hard to find unless you find a junk uh, slk or someone who's parting one out which again it's not always available so be very careful with everything in this uh in this vehicle so this uh cover back here is all it's really held by other than the plastic rivets that we already took out is the carpeting so there's a same lip underneath and this carpeting's in the way so the best way to do it is just 
remove or at least lift up one side of the carpeting which you don't necessarily have to remove this and then you should be able to pull this side out and then angle this one out from this side without having to touch this one I mean you can remove them if you want to do a little cleaning uh, that's all on you I'm probably gonna do that anyway but first off first I need to get to this uh, this tank here method you could use is obviously carpets more flexible than the plastic so just angle it out as best as you can get the carpet out there you go there is a this hose line there's another hose at the end you want to be careful with that hose in the back so you can push it out of the hole that way you don't pull it out with everything you will need two hands lift the carpet pull it out obviously this side's not done don't forget to detach the other line the drain line here as you can see with this one removed you can see the other part right there and basically this part here fits into this hole and it held, it holds in place with this piece here so now obviously with the cover removed this is what you're left with things made out of magnesium feels like well, same material from the valve cover so um, just be very careful with it, not to crack it, not to damage it. I'm not sure how heavy it is. Now, the next step obviously is removing this metal casing. Now, of course, removing all these torque bits here. Um, they're going to be T25s all the way around. There's quite a few of them. And then there's some other ones that are about, I think they're 10 mils. Those two in the ends right over there. And then same from over here. You don't really have to remove any of this uh, foam padding. Best just to leave it as is because sometimes this could be a pain to put exactly in place. So you can just move it out of the way and then just focus on removing the rest of them all the way around. Now, of course, working with the fuel system, you always want to disconnect your battery. So make sure you get your negative battery terminal removed. And then, of course, you gotta relieve full fuel pressure on the rail, on the line. This, for this car, it would be located right here up in the front. You're gonna obviously press this and drain all the fuel as possible, or the pressure that's built it up behind. Um, obviously a rag, something to contain most of that fluid, because it will be heavy in gasoline, obviously. And then of course, the leaving pressure here, but since I have a, a leak, a fuel leak because of that gasket on the, the cover of the tank, uh, obviously nothing's gonna be hissing at me. Now obviously once you remove the, that cover, it's pretty light. It's actually very light compared to the valve cover. I think the engine valve cover, one of them is heavier than that thing. So very thin, very light. I'm pretty sure very fragile, so don't bang it around. Um, pretty much once you remove all the screws, this part, and this part is what's actually gonna be holding it down. So if you think that it's still stuck on something, you're just gonna have to push that out on one side, lift it out of those little studs here. Same for the other side. And then once you come in out, you're just gonna have to work it out completely. And it will bump and maybe possibly grind some things, but honestly, it wasn't too bad. Just gotta be careful of these here. These covers that are down here, fold it away. You don't wanna damage those or bend them. Be very careful with the variable roof. Remember, it still sits in here kinda, so. Obviously the next step here is just remove this uh, insulation and padding. Hmm, I don't know, what do you think? It looks like the pump's been replaced already. So obviously we're gonna take this off and Ok, 
carefully move that out of the way. Oof, I could smell that pretty good. I think I see some residue there. And obviously once you unplug the filter, this pretty much is the filter itself. There's the seal. And here are all the little tidbits that come with it. And whoo, dolly, I still have quite a bit of fuel there. Including the level sending unit, which is still submerged in gasoline. How wonderful. Thank goodness for the proper tools since it's kind of, I'm assuming halfway full. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just drain it with my extractor. Good thing is it is going to clean out my extractor as well. Don't worry, this line was brand new. This is mainly meant for the fuel, or is what I use it for fuel. So I'm just going to drain this out to a decent level. And I can pursue accessing that fuel level center. You can see it right there. And then the pumps right behind it. All right, one thing to remember is where all the hose placements go. So you're gonna just match it, take a picture, whatever you need to do to make sure it's the same as you pull out, as you pull in. Now, with everything said and done, removing the fuel level sender is uh, pretty simple. You can obviously stick your hand inside the, the tank there. You see these clips? These clips right here, it's just basically plugged in like that. So you're gonna grab these clips, and slowly pull up you'll feel it pop loose and just slide it out and just pull it out of the tank and that's pretty much it just a little connector plug and the retention clips up at the sides and if I look at this that's the original unit pump looks very tricky and I'm gonna do my best to get a visual in here so you see that black box right there's two latches. You see those springs? That spring right over there, and then there's a spring right over there. You see that T-looking shape right there to the left side, below that spring? That's a latch. There's two of them. It holds the pump that's in the center in place. Now all you gotta do is slide one over and slide the other, which I already did. And once you do that, the pump, which is in the center, should just pop right out better visual the pump has to sit exactly of how, how I have it uh, set here and you see these little rings here that's the little swivel those little latches that lock onto here on both ends so the pump obviously has to be facing towards the front of the car with the electrical outlet to the right side obviously so you can't have it like this you can't have it like that you can't exactly how you pulled it out is exactly how you're gonna put it back in but for visual reference the pump be facing out with the square hole in front you can kind of get a visual placement of how it's going to go and you can see the new pump in there you can see those latches a lot better now that the pump is white in color and let me close one of them see that latch same for that side it just holds the pump in place it doesn't go flopping around especially with this car grab the other latch lock it in place and make sure the main fuel line is connected also the power for the pump now one thing to always keep in mind is in order to pull the pump out you have to make sure you uh, disconnect everything and move it out of the way because it's big enough just for the pump to go in and out so if you're good at uh, matching the shape with the holes you'll be good here this looks good let's go ahead and attach the fuel level sender unit so another reference it goes just like this perfectly in and what we're gonna go ahead and do is put it in now again trying to get a video picture of me sliding it in it's gonna be very difficult probably shouldn't but I'm gonna try my best here actually no I'm gonna actually you get the general idea of how it's gonna go it just slides in and clips in so I'm gonna do this without holding a phone now you can see the level sender unit perfectly in place again it just it slides in on the edge of it Pretty simple. These little flaps right here at the very end, the edge of this, below these little retainer clips, this is what you guide in first into those slots on the black casing. And you can't see those little flaps anymore. These little flaps right here, you can't see that no more because they're inside the, the little socket where it slides into. And then it just clip into place and the bottom end plugs in. So there it gets its input signal. The next thing to do is pretty much just um, obviously put the fuel filter in. All 
Alright, now the main part of the job is done. I already sealed it. The next thing I need to do is I'm going to put, put the battery back on, prime the pump uh, so everything gets pressurized, and then start it. Let's see if I messed anything up. Alright, key in, position two, I can hear pump, so that's a good sign. One more time, and there's my fuel level. Sounds good. So it did take a bit of time there for the fuel to get to, obviously, the fuel line, the fuel filter, whatever else that I drained. So let's see, seems good here. We'll just let it run for a bit. Yeah, but I think we're, it's a success. The next thing to do is put everything back and uh, obviously we do that in reverse order. But that's pretty much it to do uh, the fuel uh, system inside the tank it's not too complicated um, it does take a bit of time obviously if you're new to this I mean if you can take apart uh, simple nuts and bolts and some lines you should be good to go it's just common sense be safe about it because it is dealing with fuel uh, make sure you don't have a fuel tank like I did a full tank I'm sorry not a fuel tank a full tank like I did and you should be good to go I mean everything looks good here no lights Hit stop, try it again. Nice, and the fuel level is still the same, cool. Before it would jump all over the damn place. So, we're good to go. But yeah, thank you uh, for, for taking your time to watch my video. Again, this is a starting point for this car after everything that's happened. I do appreciate all of you who are too tuned in today. Uh, please like and subscribe and share, you know. This is a little bit more of a hobby now to me, so, you know, I would like to take this serious. Any support would be greatly appreciated, uh, just to keep a guy going in his project, uh, just, you know. And, but anyway, this is uh, Panzer. Uh, you guys, take it easy.